Jag tänker att eh, vi, 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 jag kommer att prata, för att det ska bli lite roligare så tänkte jag att vi ska försöka prata båda två på engelska ganska mycket. Eh, jag hoppas att det går bra. Powerpoint det kommer att vara på eh, svenska. Och sen har vi en test på den här direktöversättningen som eh, Powerpoint har. Funkar det bra för alla? Annars får ni gärna säga ifrån. Så får jag köra lite svensk-engelska i så fall. Hej då. Det var bra. Okej. Okay. Vad sa du då för? Du behöver inte hitta på några nya ord idag. Vi brukar vara duktiga på det. Ja, ah, jag, jag kommer nog hitta på eh, ord på engelska istället. Det är så det blir. Eh, så... Um, We, we will not have any camera on because I have my laptop and I'm sitting with double screens. I hope that's fine. Uh, we will instead uh, focus on looking at the PowerPoint that we actually are having. And with me, I have Pierre. Hi, Pierre. Hello. How are you? I'm pretty good. Splendid. Good. Uh, like you see, the translation is going quite okay, so we try to speak clearly here, so you hear us and that you also can read the text that it's translating, because it's translating quite good if we speak properly. So, let's uh, start with the presentation. So, um, <clears throat> I'm going to start. For you. There's a lot of screens. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> when did you start archery, Pierre, and why? Oh, this is the funny story. I started archery in 2002 after shooting my little brother with a, <clears throat> a wooden bow that we made ourselves. So instead of emergency, my mom decided that it would be better to do this in a club. Mm -hmm. That's good. And you? I started in 2010 and I was actually doing orienteering before. I was doing, um, <clears throat> I went to a high school, gymnasium school, special for uh, sports and I did uh, orienteering practice uh, with all like technical parts uh, running um, because we running uh, in orienteering and we did uh, <laughs> uh, some other uh, kind of practice and um, and at the same high school it was uh, also the national uh, archery high school at this time it was down south and um, so I had some issues doing orienteering and uh, I, I tried archery and then I got stuck. Okay, and, and when did you start practicing really for reaching the national team? Um, I would say it was 2011, so like one year after starting because I started uh, practicing quite uh, like hard from the start it uh, became in my my uh, sight that i could actually maybe reach the national team so i started 2011 with that and you pierre uh i had the uh, more complicated uh parkour so actually in 2007 2008 i went in a training camp for where we were mixing uh both school and uh, practice. It's uh, the federation who is running this. And uh, I discovered at this time uh, the real practice, and it was just like a kickstart for me. And then I really, really start to practice uh, really hard with when I signed up at the Nîmes Archery Club in south of France. And there I, I started to practice really with a professional attitude. So what type of coach education have you done and when? So the French Federation is quite well structured regarding this and it provides some uh, course to become a volunteer instructor, volunteer 
um, coach. So I did that when I was uh, around 15, 16, something like that in 2005. And uh, I was uh, volunteering in my club for coaching. Then when I entered Nîmes, I got the certification to be instructor in 2012. And we have also a national degree that allows us to be professional coach, uh, like be able to prepare athletes. And I passed this degree. I started this degree in 2018. And um, but let's talk about you now. What's your best achievement in archery? Oh, so you don't want to do what I have done for education. I'm sorry. I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. I'm so stressed. But I, <laughs> it's okay. I can take uh, both of those questions. And so in Sweden, actually, the only thing I have done is. Um, the step one, and it was in 2011, 2012. And you asked me, Pierre, what my highest achievement is. I don't know, but I think if I would say something, it can be the silver in team at the World Field Championship 2014, I think it was. The time goes by so fast. And you then, mister, what is your highest achievement? Um, instead of achievement, I would like, I would prefer to say my best season was definitely 2014. I entered the national team this year and I got my first medal, international medal in my first uh, selection. So it was silver in Shanghai. Cool. So um, we hope to provide you guys with a, a bit difference here from the background we are coming from and providing you with uh, some tips and uh, also hopefully inspiration and recognition in, in the, our path of uh, doing archery and practicing. So we are going to dig in right uh, directly to <clears throat> giving you a training tip one and it starts by asking yourself these four questions which is why do you practice how often do you practice and what are you going to do when you're going to practice and what have you achieved during the practice and Pierre can you tell me what's uh, why is this important questions those questions, these, these questions are very important to plan. Actually, it's the, the, the ground questions. Uh, why do you practice? Why should you go uh, two times, three times, four times a week to the field? Is it to see the friends? Is it to reach a high goal, a middle goal? You need to ask this question to be able to set up a plan and structure your practice, basically. And we are going to take you guys on a path on how we have been practicing. So when we started our trade back in for me 2010, how did I practice? I, for example, I already at this point did a uh, practice um, practice book diary pra practice diary. And I was writing when I was practicing, what I was practicing and how long I was practicing. And I also was setting goals at this moment, but only like how many arrows I am going to shoot this, uh, this uh, week. And then I put up for each, uh, each um, uh, session. Okay, now I will shoot this many arrows. And I was also, for me, it was natural to do the cardio and the strength exercising because I had this from the orienteering. This was the basics um, if you wanted to go on a um, high school with uh, um, doing sports, you were supposed to do all these kind of stuff. So I took that with me when I started the archery and I, because I was new, I really liked gathering information. So I was asking around a lot and uh, I was actually looking at archers around me because 
this was the people I uh, I thought was uh, better than me and they they were good. So I was looking at everyone around me and uh, I had like no filter. And I'm going to say uh, that I had like a coach at um, archery um, like high school. Um, and why I say archery uh, coach with um, the, the science here, um, I will explain it more because uh, the further I have come in my travel, I see different on how to see on a coach. Um, so, and how has your, uh, when you started in 2002, <laughs> how did you practice then, Pierre? So back in 2002, I was a kid and uh, I was very passionate by archery. Most of my practice consists in enjoying the feeling of the bow, releasing the string, and basically it was more or less throwing arrows. So <clears throat> we did not have any coach. It was um, the, the structure in France, uh, the, the structure of the club was not as developed as it is now and it was very few coach so i was trying to gather information uh, pretty much everywhere uh, that's also why i did this um, coach um, volunteering um, certification through the the federation to try to understand more uh, how to practice and uh, how to, to build the archery. So I was looking also at top shooters, but back in 2002, World Archery TV did not exist. So it was really hard to have a view of what needs to be done. And I, I was gathering, I was like a sponge, taking a bit everything and trying to make it mine, but without knowledge, without a pass or a instruction or some background, it, it, was, it was barely impossible to listen everyone and build my own. So if we look back <coughs> in the days, uh, the, the training tip that we first gave you, I would say for me, why I was practicing, it was to get my arrows shot. And this, <laughs> this was what, why I was practicing back day, then. And uh, um, I, just, I, I knew actually how much I was practicing at this time. And also, um, yeah, for me, it became too much around the numbers. So maybe I didn't really think through why I was shooting, why I was practicing, and what my goal was to achieve during the sessions. Did you think about these kind of things? No, uh, I was practicing to not miss my brother again. <laughs> well, that's good. So to the next training tip for and that we will give you is to actually do a, a diary over your um, over your practice and it doesn't need to be too uh, advanced uh, you can use it for writing down the answers from the training tip one while you are practicing how often you would like to practice and or should practice and what you would uh, do at the practice and what you actually achieved during the practice. It's very good to use the, the diary to uh, write down your challenges and your solutions and... And more than that, it's like uh, building a kind of uh, contract with yourself. Uh, write it down, what's your goal, why, you, uh, how often you want to practice and, and all the questions. It's it making it uh, like, okay, I, I commit to that. Uh, and if I want to reach my goal, if I want to achieve uh, what I want in archery, you, you need to stand for it, actually. You need to write it down and make it yours. It's it's your goal, it's your, your sports. You're not doing that to look good, you're doing that for yourself. So it's interesting to have this diary also because first it, it, need, it helps you to structure the, the basic ground and see after days if you respect the plan you set up before and to adjust it. Because 
maybe one week you will be sick and you will not be able to practice, but it's fine actually. If you did the big work and you follow the plan you set up, it's 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 very easy to have a back view mm -hmm. on what you did regarding the practice. Mm -hmm. Also, sometimes we can practice and it's a really hard practice. And we finally understand the little um, technique point that the coach was talking for several sessions and that we were we had a hard time to to find how to do it. And suddenly you find the, the posture, the feeling, the muscle that you need to use to do it properly. It's very interesting to have a diary to write it down because if you face again this issue, if you get lost a bit on this point, you can easily turn some pages and come back to the session that make it clear. So you don't lose time trying again and again and turning in circle. It helps you to have a, a, a wide line uh, and to look back. Mm. Yeah. Oh. How have the practice actually changed for us uh, when we started focusing against the national team? For me, it was already one year after I started archery to go with the focus. And for me, it became more um, during a very long time. I uh, like from when I started going 2011 against the national team and to not so far um, like just a year ago or something, I uh, <clears throat> were more able to structure my practice uh, around uh, the archery, uh, creating yearly plan, doing mental practice. I actually quite early started having issues with um, with my shoulder, so I started with rehab that then went over to actually do being prehab. Um, the hard part I had, even if I had a lot of structure, I had difficulties being balanced in my life. Um, I still had, in, during the time after I went out of the high school, I had a, a like a coach, but then I, I lost and I didn't really had no one, no coach. And uh, but at this period, I had a big team around me. I had a physical trainer, I had a mental trainer, um, uh, Costa <laughs> It's fine. And a life coach <laughs> uh, helping me to become better in my balance in the life. So I had like all this big package around um, my life, uh, but I didn't really had so good structure maybe in the archery. And still during this time, I was doing this diary. But when I'm looking back, I don't think I was doing the diary for me. I didn't really use it. Uh, for me, the diary at this point was, I want to write down that I have done something. If I haven't done anything, I'm like, I'm bad. Then it was like a motivation stuff for me. So I did it for someone else more. I didn't use it as a tool that it can be. Um, and that I'm a bit sad about. Uh, and for for you, Pierre, during this period, 2012 was it, <laughs> that you were going for for the national team in France? How was this journey? How did you change in your practice? Uh, actually, I I mostly learned what was practicing really to achieve uh, this goal reaching the national team in france it's it's kind of a, a goal a milestone uh, so le learning what was practice actually what involved to practice for archery it involves to shoot a bunch of arrows of course but it involves also to respect your tool your, your your primary tool is your body so you have to to prehab this is definitely something that I will recommend for every archer that wants to shoot on a decent level. If you want to increase the poundage and you don't prehab, it's it's terrible. So I did that because I I had a 
shoulders that needed to be warmed up properly and we all have this issue. The, the one who say I don't need prehab, I, I don't believe it. It could be very short, but I also learn uh, and quite hardly, I would say that uh, we need the uh, cardio and strength practice beside of archery. It doesn't need to be shaped for marathon. Everyone who saw me anywhere can say that I'm not uh, someone uh, that can run a marathon. But you can run. Yeah, I can. Uh, anyway, it needs to, the cardio is very important also to understand that you can push your boundaries. It's not really much uh, having a condition uh, or uh, it, it just helps you to, to free your mind from the limits you can put on your own. And the strength practice, of course, you want to increase your, your, your strength to shoot a higher poundage and being able to handle a, a stronger bow and shooting arrow faster. It's also a way of the prehab. Like yeah, and, and it prehab. works also with the prehab, of course, because developing the muscles involved in the archery, handling the bow easier will save you from uh, many injuries that could occur on tendon and so on. Yeah. And also mental practice. I was um, back in at these days, I was more thinking that Either you're good at mental or you're bad. It's something that you can't work on. I was thinking that before. And then I start to learn some tools and use some tools uh, about the mental practice. And actually, it's totally a part of the practice. Uh, no one is bad at mental. You can work. I also learn how to structure my technique. How, what's, uh, is, what is the most important thing in uh, in a shooting form and what makes you what makes a good archer and instead of watching all what what makes an archer unique like for example Brady Ellison pulling a, a lot on the side or JC pulling a, a lot down or uh, Mete Gazos with his front shoulder a bit high uh, all those things that makes them shooting their, their shoot, uh, make their, their own shoot, I stopped focus on this. Uh, I start to watch uh, more what they all do, mm. what they have in common when they shoot an arrow. And if you are, if you look so far, there's a lots of uh, technical elements, technical elements that are strictly the same and the point of the technique is to use the bow the way it's supposed to be used mm. you you don't screw a, you don't screw a screw with a hammer the bow is the same you need to use it the proper way that that way it will give you what you expect also i uh starting a practice diary which was really hard at the beginning because i wanted to make it too accurate, too specific, and, and so on. But you need, it's definitely something that helped me quite a lot. And for the first time, I had a professional coach behind me, uh, for the second time exactly, but I had someone daily at practice pushing me when I was a bit uh, lazy, uh, telling me to chill when I was a bit too hard on the work, and supporting me and give me show me a path to follow so it was a big difference with the, just having this kind of coach was it a big difference be, be, uh, compared to these kind of volunteering uh, coaches because this you had before in a way yeah 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 definitely with this coach uh, actually it's olivier gria which is the sport uh, sport director i don't know really much how to translate it in english sorry <clears throat> and this guy is uh, actually the the man who's uh, ruling the um, making the nims club working and he has a uh, quite a uh, big background regarding uh, archers that he brought to the olympics for example in uh, 1992, uh, Severine Evangelisti, Aurore Traillant, uh, 
and many more. Uh, uh, these are old French archers. The, and but he has an, a very big experience of what requires the the international competition. So that makes a huge difference. Cool. So so it's uh, as you see, it's a, a big difference for us when we we started. Uh, for me, I had some stuff, uh, but it didn't really help. It's uh, it's about having all the pieces to to go forward, isn't it? Exactly. So for our uh, third tip is actually to um, set goals and complementary practice, um, meaning like dare to set more goals. But now when we're speaking in English, we would like to separate saying goals and milestones or um, so right. if I can you make can explain it, this yeah. 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 Um, the goal is um, for me a goal is a competition a level of points and a ranking this is what you want to achieve at the end but to see that you're moving forward you need some milestones markers some moments when you stop and you say okay uh, am I in the, on the right path or am I going fast enough or am I going too fast? What can I move? Uh, you can also adjust your planning at, at those moments. But between the milestones, you just practice. Yeah, and uh, this is... Uh, so what we want you to try to work with is uh, setting big goals and small from years to days. And knowing that you have a, a goal when you're going to the practice, if we're talking about the first training tip where we want to know what we're going to practice. And also doing the complement, uh, complementary practice, meaning do mental training, prehab, uh, strength exercising, cardio. Uh, but we would most likely want to push on actually doing the mental training and the prehab because there's a lot of training to do and as you know you don't have so much time and uh, for me I always have tried to push to have everything and uh, it can sometimes be too much and the mental practice and the preab you can always do in close to your archery session or even during your archery session the prehab is need to be prior the the, the practice but the mental practice is something you can introduce in your own practice. Uh, with my students here, we work on the trigger. Uh, we can talk about this a, a <laughs> bit deeper, but you can set up a trigger during your practice. You can learn how to breathe. And any practice regarding related to mental needs to be uh, done also during the archery practice mm. because you will use your mental skills and your mental tools on the shooting line or just before the shooting line and it needs to be in situation mm. i would like to come back on the goal setting as you said uh, it's always interesting to go from the big goal and to set up all the markers to we call in in french we call that macro cycle meso cycle and micro cycle which is like the same in other language, yes. Oh, okay. Kind of, with a, a different accent, yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting to go from the, the macro, the big goal, setting up, uh, for example, uh, my goal is to get a medal at the Olympics, let's say. Then you have this goal, uh, you set up this goal four years ahead, <clears throat> and but there's competition in between. So this is the, the, the big view. You know, you have an idea of the level you need to reach to be competitive. So you can say, OK, in four years, I want to be a uh, top 10 in the world and shooting over 690. And then you set up competitions and goals in between. For example, uh, world champs, European Championship, World Cups, whatever. It, it, yeah, you set up those milestones 
and then you decline. Uh, for example, I have the Olympics, then I have the championship of the year, European or world. But OK, I will not just go to that competition. So I need smaller competition to be prepared with a similar range. So you have the World Cups to prepare the championship. But if you want to be competitive in World Cups, you need to start a bit uh, lower to start trying your skills and adapting, adjusting. So this is how it works, actually. You take small steps and from each step, you look back, you look, you, you check what you've done and you adapt your coming practice to reach the next step. What works, what did not work, what you what worked, but you could do better. Mm. And this you need a coach because most of times we are not really uh, honest with ourselves when it's about uh, this. Yeah, and, and if, when we talk about coach, it's um, um, it's not always easy to find a coach, but just having someone to discuss with and, and talk with can work also very good. Um, actually, uh, if we also go back to the, the training tip one with the questions, um, it's interesting to ask yourself when we are talking about complementary uh, practice, is it necessary for me to do the do extra strength exercises or am I already quite strong for the type I'm doing? Maybe I don't need to do it so much or maybe I need to do it more. Um, so it's interesting to ask yourself uh, in all the things you want to practice. Why am I practicing and, and what's the purpose and what do I want to achieve with it? Yeah. And in the same order of the training tip number one, what will you do at the practice? OK, mm -hmm. I'm shooting archery. So during the workout, I would do a lot of legs. That doesn't <laughs> make any sense. Uh, you need legs to stand straight, but you will not put most of your time on this. You will mostly use the upper body. You will mostly develop the upper body and the core. You need to stay still. You, legs, it's good to develop for maybe. the balance, but but the purpose maybe is that they want to practice and have like super big bow uh, legs so they will be standing still. <laughs> that can be a purpose, maybe not the most Sorry. best. <laughs> Sorry, we, we lost her. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm joking. But it's it's interesting to actually, uh, yeah, question yourself. Yeah, and the same for the cardio, uh, for archery. Do we need to be able to run uh, 15 kilometer per hour during one hour. I don't think so. What we need in archery is to work on uh, having a heart rate quite low, but also being able to focus even when the heart rate is high. So it's interesting to work more intervals and sometimes long run, but mostly intervals because this will make your heart going high and low and high and low. And this is what we need. We need to come back to normal quite fast and holding the normal easier. And intervals is also quite a, a nice way of doing cardio because uh, it doesn't take so long time and you can actually gain a lot of cardio like um, becoming very uh, faster. It's more effective way of uh, building up your cardio, I would say, uh, of my years of running. <laughs> Regarding archery. Yeah, uh, but actually I have a question that is very interesting to, to talk about in this uh, place. For example, for me during the time I, uh, when I was like, now I'm going for the, <clears throat> the national team in the same time period, for me, I was uh, connected with the Swedish Olympic Committee and they started uh, demanding uh, like, uh, yeah, you were, should be able to run uh, three kilometers and it should be on like uh, 12, 13 minutes to be really having good points on that because they set points on how much uh, and like uh, how good you were and um, also doing all these other kind of strength exercises. And uh, so it, um, 
for me that is a bit tricky because it's colliding a bit because maybe I feel no but I don't need to do more cardio than I do but according to them I should do more cardio how do you see that how is it for you like in France do you have any input in this uh, basically in France uh, the national the national uh, the Olympic National Committee National Olympic Committee mm -hmm. okay um, give validate the selection of the national team that will compete to the Olympics but it's on the federation to select the, the athletes mm. so <clears throat> but you have another if way. you're fifth in the world but you're not able to run three kilometers in uh, 12 minutes mm -hmm. then maybe you can get an Olympic medal mm. so maybe they will send you to get a medal mm. ask JC if he can run 10 kilometers yeah so or watch him doing that so what's interesting is to actually okay are you able to provide higher scores and compete with the high levels then maybe it's not super needed all the time because you maybe have the skills that is needed we are archers we are not marathonian uh, it's needed to have a good condition but it's related to the sport you're doing mm. yeah so i would say for me i i would feel much better by doing more running and everything so then i would maybe become better okay <laughs> So if we continue on uh, how actually our practice is looking um, today. So when I say today, I would say from like last year when I went down to France and seeing uh, the difference on practicing in a more professional club. Uh, so what I'm doing differently today or, uh, or since I I started shooting in France is that I have a more structured technique and um, I have the, the, the practice I'm doing is more um, balancing up my goals. I didn't really practice to reach my goals and um, the volume has changed. It's higher and um, the way I'm shooting is differently. It's more um, yeah more structured the, the archery sessions and the environment is totally different i have people around me i have like shooters uh, to to shoot with in my own category and also uh, other archers that is uh, both better and uh, yeah equally to me and, and it's just a different environment it's like we all want to achieve high goals a, a little bit more like this and I also, so here I come to this, uh, <laughs> this uh, coach thing, because as you see on the slide, I have a coach without any uh, extra, I don't know what quotes. Um, and it's because the, the difference in France when I, now I have like a coach and that's, that is, um, there all the time I can always have a discussion with him um, or I actually I have several coaches I would say we can have discussions <clears throat> and they can come and give me feedback uh, like whenever when I'm shooting we can have a session together and uh, letting me know like okay now you're going to do this you work on this and um, but at the same time I can do and I can work on my own and I can ask okay now I'm, I'm a bit I need feedback and they directly give me something and I'm directly back on track if I feel lost because both they have given me a more structured uh, technique to work with so they know and all the these coaches they are working also in the same way they know the path they are going so it's not like like it has been like in Sweden where one say one thing one say another thing and they they like talk about all these different kind of pieces within uh, a technique. Um, so that things, that's a big difference for me. The, the other side is I have a less uh, smaller team around me, but I feel for me, it's, it doesn't matter. I have gathered this information during my years. So I can just 
take that back uh, and work with it together. So I would say that I'm, it's easier for me to put in goals. I'm working with the goals. I'm doing other practice also. It's a big more balance between everything. I still do my diary and I would say that now I, I use my diary because I actually do two type of diaries. I have one where I have my numbers giving me the motivation. And then I had this other diary where I write, write down uh, to be structure in my technique. Uh, okay, today I was working on this and this was the breakthrough today. And uh, I wrote it down so I can look it back when I go to the next session. So that's quite nice, I would say. But it has taken me a long time. I would say 10 years for me to learn how to really work with the, with the practice diary. And Pierre, how are you doing today? Because you learned quite late to do diary. I'm not practicing anymore, you know. <laughs> no, I'm totally joking. Um, <clears throat> okay, I, I was supposed to have a translation on what it's written. <laughs> but basically, I will talk about uh, how I'm practicing today. Your practice is more uh, planned. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. I can talk about it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my practice is more planned. It's something that I'm not doing myself, but I'm, dis I'm discussing it with the national coach because I'm in the Olympic group. So the group that he's working for the Olympics and the selection will most likely be in this group. So um, I'm... I'm trying with him to set up my, my plan and OK, this time you will work on this with this intensity, this amount of arrow and uh, mentally we will plan this. So we plan definitely every area of uh, the practice uh, weeks by weeks. Uh, I also go to the practice with a purpose all the time. Uh, there is not one practice where I go just Oh, let's shoot some arrows or no, if I go to practice, it's to achieve something. OK, uh, for example, when I went back from the lockdown in France, I did not shoot during a long time, like one month and a half. Uh, so it was really hard. I had lots of pain in my shoulder, so I needed my, my goal was very small. My goal was day after day to be able to shoot more and more arrows and handle the poundage. And now I'm back on track on a decent amount of arrows. What makes also a huge difference today is that I have a, a whole team around me. I have, of course, my club coach, Olivier, which is uh, with me every day. Even if I'm here, we are calling each other very often to talk about what I'm doing and what I should do. And he's also awesome at kicking my, uh, my ass when I'm a bit lazy. Uh, and I have the national coach. Uh, I work with him for two or three years now, and it's very interesting because he provides me uh, a more accurate, uh, more with more expectation, mm. a higher level of details than Olivier. And uh, how is it their cooperation? They call each other and we have a diary that he that we are sharing all, all the three of us. Where every time I work with uh, Nicola, he write down everything we go through and uh, this way Olivier can read it, understand it. We can talk about it and we they, they contact each other quite often also. That's good. I have a psychologist, psychologist with who Mental I coach. Yeah, psychologist, and but she's uh, very specific for sports. Uh, yeah, sports psychologist. Yeah, so she's very specific with that. She's working at the National Training Center where most of Olympic sports are practicing in Paris, uh, the INSEP. So she used to the issue that we can face when we are practicing that much, when we are doing it in a very professional way. I have also a personal coach and he's having a lot of hard time with me. 
especially at the beginning. But I'm seeing him uh, quite often and uh, he has this ability to understand me and push me really hard. He's not a military coach uh, that, uh, okay, we have a plan, you follow this plan, blah, blah, blah. No, he's very you know, in uh, what you need. Okay, this needs to be done. And what's very important also, I have at the club a sparring partner because the Olympic group is practicing in Paris, but I build my team around Nîmes. I'm living in Nîmes. So I need someone that have kind of the same dream as me to challenge me every day. Uh, this guy is Quentin. And his dream is to be at the Olympics in 2024. So it's very, very nice to have someone with this, uh, this goal to, to push me. He's quite young. So it's a bit the uh, old uh, dog and the uh, young dog uh, fighting, but it's it's definitely a big source of motivation. I would like to do a throwback regarding goals uh, and how goals are related to mental. Um, when you set up your goal, it needs to be a reasonable goal. There's no reasonable dream. You can dream as big as you want. But when you set up a goal, uh, especially uh, um, a short-term goal, it needs to be respecting your level and respecting uh, having a decent and reasonable uh, improvement. Mm. If you shoot six and barely 600, 600 one year before the Olympics, don't put as a goal to go to the Olympics. Mm. It will put a lot of stress on you. This is very well related. The, the difference between your abilities and your goal, more there's a difference, bigger the stress is in competition. Mm. So it's better to do baby steps day, day after day instead of trying to, to jump to the moon. Yes. <laughs> that, that's all. I, I, I just think it was important to make this a bit more accurate regarding the goal setting. Yeah. So we go over to the fourth uh, tip and it's <coughs> about structuring the practice. And um, what we mean by this is to become uh, like doing a yearly plan, implement your goals, and uh, put up the, the milestones, the, the goals and checking points and plan your practice, structure your technique. This is what we want to push on. Exactly. So we talked about that or we already overviewed this in the prior, previous uh, training tips. Um, actually, <clears throat> doing that, um, there is no a good way to do. You can, uh, if, if you want, I can provide you something that we set up with the national coach and you can make it a bit more simple. Uh, there is no good way to do the best is to start doing it. You will learn from this and it's very interesting to at least try something. This way you have material, you have something to go from, you have material. OK, I set up this. I don't know really why it doesn't give me any data on what I did uh, or them. I forgot to put this on and it could be interesting to set up regarding this. The, the, the best way is to experience, try. Yeah. So if we uh, look at the summary of uh, like the four training tips that we have given you and like just um, going through them from the start. So ask yourself the question why you're training and uh, practicing, how often, what are you going to do and what did you achieve during this, uh, um, this session? Doing that also with the uh, um, with the um, not only the, the archery sessions, but also if you do other type of uh, practicing and that you should write it down in your diary where you also can gather, use it as a tool for you to remember to write down your challenges and how you so, um, 
came up with uh, solutions for it and also become more aware of how much you are practicing and uh, set more goals like you were talking about uh, set the goals uh, so your uh, ability to actually achieve them and, and put them not too high um, and structure your practice uh, what are you going to practice so it goes back to the first que questions the first training tip is it something you feel that we have missed during these uh, these things uh, so far i think we talk about pretty much everything it's very short time so i really would appreciate to dig deeper into this and exchange so the best is to ask those who follow if they have any questions regarding this if they want something to be more clear regarding our experience mm. yeah so We are going to actually take for uh, time for questions uh, because we actually put this up and hope that someone would come with some questions. And think of if you have any questions, you need to take away your muting. Well, I have a question for you. Um, we've we've talked about uh, in other uh, forums uh, about um, like if you have special um, athletes that you um, look up to a bit more uh, could be like different uh, ways. Uh, have you guys have any special athletes that you have um, looked at a bit more? You mean like uh, a like reference? Idols. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, so many. You can imagine. All those who are above me on the world ranking are those I try to inspire. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it something special that you have uh, looked at and worked more on? Oof. Uh, as I said before, what I'm trying to see is what they all do in common. So why they are better than me? Oh, they all do this and I don't. Maybe I should start doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm not more stupid than the second guy who made fire, you know? Mm -hmm. There's the one who invent and the other one who, oh, it seems to work. Why should I reinvent the, the, the wheel? Mm -hmm. True. Uh... Very, very wise. Have you guys, um, since you're a couple, uh, have you, do you feel like you can uh, take advantage of, of that relationship, uh, like in your own uh, sport? She's making me run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I think as you've seen in our different kind of paths, um, I come with another type of background, so I'm quite good at pushing with doing uh, these very structured uh, practice. And for Pierre, he comes with a lot of knowledge within the archery where I feel that I don't have. And um, so he, he becomes like, a, he's actually like a coach for me, uh, but we have had some difficulties. Uh, like, you know, separating that we, okay, now we are on the archery course. Uh, so now you're my coach. And yeah, being the coach and the partner, it's a nightmare, honestly. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, because I'm the nightmare, apparently. <laughs> no, honestly, it's uh, really interesting. It's easier to understand each other. Uh, what I think is good uh, with having a partner in the sport is that uh, the the partner understand what it means going abroad on competition. Because for like in our example, Pierre is doing it full time, 
So it's a way a lot on, on camps and competitions. Yeah, regarding that matter, it's super easy because uh, she's understanding very much what what involves uh, so much uh, commitment in in archery which most of people out of uh, sports are not really able to understand and uh, because she's doing it uh, in the same uh, pretty much the same goals uh, as i do it it help us to understand the uh, good times and the bad moments also and <clears throat> and even if we had hard time when i coach her um when it's about to learn it's easier because we can understand each other way faster the only hard time it's when it comes to okay now you're doing something wrong uh it's hard to understand and we can trigger easily emotions. It's, it's important to understand that, okay, now we are professional. Yeah. Now we are not private. And sometimes when you're tired, you know, you can take some personal. <laughs> but it's yeah. definitely super interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, well, let's see if someone has uh, a question and it, it it's okay to to say it in Swedish, uh, we can translate it if it's uh, yeah, if it's, it's totally necessary. Yeah. <laughs> ask in your own language, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. So if you have a question, either just put your uh, uh, mic on or raise your hand by using that uh, function. Is it normal that no Everyone one... Everyone is sleeping. <laughs> No, I just think they're a bit, maybe nervous. Uh, Kiki, you always have a bunch of questions. We we can see her on a daily basis, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm not saying anything, because I always say something. And these guys, I can, I, I'm just having a good laugh, though, because they are so funny when they are having their, their together session. So, um uh, it, it's it's very nice to watch as well there regarding um, this with actually doing having high goals and being a couple around it as well. So that's that's um, that's good fun to watch. Um, but I was thinking that uh, a really good thing that you said was this with making a plan or a diary and to try to stick to it, um, which I know that we do with already with the juniors team for the the um, uh, the juniors that is on the national team and and even earlier we've started to do that i just think that something that we and if you don't have some kind of diary it's impossible to reach any further because you don't really you can't see your own steps but i think something that is really worth bringing back to the clubs as well on any level it doesn't really matter is that uh, to communicate that you're making this for your own sake not yeah. for mine as a coach or a leader or a trainer or a club but for your sake so it should be fun and write things that is important to you mm -hmm. and, and I think we could really improve on all levels by taking this with us i don't know about the rest of you guys it's a lot of people in this in this um in this group yeah i was thinking it, it was it a totally the, the the tip where we're giving you uh, for me i feel it's uh, maybe very basic uh, but i don't know is this something that is totally oh i'm already doing this then hopefully you will have some questions about okay how do i do the next step or if you want more practical, shoot. Yeah. I would like to say that it's quite interesting that you both are uh, questioning questioning the uh, Swedish krav uh, profilen. Yeah. Uh, um, and you are saying 
about the same conclusions as I, <laughs> I have come to. And I'm also quite glad that you stuck the presentation to practicing and not talking about bear shaft tuning because you rarely rarely see a Swedish recurve archer without the bear shafts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we hope that uh, it was a purpose to inspire with this and um, like talk about stuff that we maybe don't talk so much about. But on the other hand, uh, when you're coming down south next time, will you, <laughs> will you give me a holler? Uh, I can say now that actually uh, we are going down to Lund uh, tomorrow. <laughs> you're kidding me. And no. you never, and you haven't said anything. I have what? been very. <laughs> I was going to do that when I'm going in the car because I haven't really planned uh, so much. The time goes by fast. <laughs> you you tell me. Yeah. I have I have one here that's almost twenty. You know. Oh, right. <gasps> yeah. Right. <laughs> She's done her first year in, at university. So, you want to meet? Yeah. I will. Uh, I will talk to you in private, so not everyone wants yeah, to. Yeah, please do. Please do. Would be. A... Was a long time ago. Damn it. Yeah. yeah. Like maybe uh, people know, I have been uh, practicing all over Sweden from uh, south to north. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you haven't told me once. <laughs> Well, that sounds like a great plan for you guys. Uh, and oh, I yes. know, <laughs> no, it's okay. And I know, Pierre, that you have, well, you're in Sweden now. If uh, anyone like to have private lessons, uh, they can book you uh, by sending you an email, correct? <clears throat> yeah, email or WhatsApp or Facebook. Uh, you can reach me uh, pretty much in every... Uh, Net network yeah. every, every way. Um, yeah, if you want further information for private lessons or so on, uh, feel free to ask and I, I'll be glad to talk about your project and what you want in archery. I, I, I'll be glad to help you. Yeah. Uh, also, I was also thinking private lessons if you're a shooter, but if you're a coach in your club, uh, actually the degree I passed in France, it's also about to teach how to coach. So <clears throat> I will not uh, make your world upside down, but uh, I can definitely help you with uh, some uh, tools, some structure in the practice with beginners to competitors. So if some of you guys are interested in a seminar or a one day, two day course, uh, we can think about a, a, a setup, gather everyone to make something. I, I don't pretend to be better to anyone, but I have some background, some knowledge, and I, I'm more than happy to share it. Sounds awesome. Uh... Well, thank you for for this evening and for this lovely chat. Uh, I really wish everyone a really good midsummer. Uh, is will this be the first midsummer for you, Pierre? Definitely. Definitely. But yeah. I'm a bit stressed because last year Erika bring. <laughs> took me to the cinema, bring me to the cinema to watch this movie, Midsommar. And it's a very weird way of uh, seeing Midsommar, apparently. But I'm super, super scared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm super scared, but it's fine. It's worse. <laughs> you should actually, guys, uh, look up uh, the movie Midsommar. Uh, mm. It's... Uh... <laughs> It's a total twist of how you uh, do Midsummer in Sweden. It's quite funny. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for that 
tape. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely evening, and we'll see you soon. Yes. Bye bye, well, everyone. So well. Yeah, glad me so much. Hey, Doris. Bye. 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 bye.